we're starting. And uh, I'd like to introduce Sana Doan, who is the regional producer of Pavilion Dance Southwest. And so she works with regions. That's what she does, you know, and with making them uh, communicate and bring dance around in the communities. So what we're going to do today is the kind of work she does. And we, she will also be helped by Louise Taylor, who is the artistic director of Attic Dance. She's sitting right there. You're not. Don't worry, I'll explain. Okay, she'll explain. <laughs> and Derek Newland, who will be man number three, will uh, be around later and help us during the day. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think this is, this is a session for, um, for us to think about and build on some of those uh, discussions that were had yesterday morning, the presentations from Derek, uh, from Frederic, uh, and from Stefan, where they were talking about some of the outreach work. And uh, in my role as regional producer, this is pretty much what I do, well, is, here, is um, uh, support, coordinate, come up with ideas for different outreach programs. And I work over a very wide area, so equivalent to some of your wide, huge areas that you're working in. And um, so an important thing to say is that when you're looking at the community you might work with, it may well be that uh, one of you is working with, for instance, uh, a care home setting with older people near you, and another dance practitioner or dance organisation is working in a care home setting 100 miles away, uh, but you're both working with the same kind of community in your locality, and you can still collaborate on that as a programme. So if you bear that in mind as you're talking in a bit... Um, so this workshop is about how to make an outreach program um, and what we're going to do, I'm going to talk through two case studies, you've got some prompts on your table and I'm going to use those to talk through two real, real programs that we're doing uh, with Pavilion Dance Southwest. I'm then going to hand over to Lois who is an artist, a choreographer, a community practitioner, a lecturer and she's going to give her personal perspective about working in a community and then it's over to you to talk, to come up with some ideas, concepts, uh, talk about what communities you might work with, um, and see how far you can get through in that prompt sheet to come up with a programme. And it might be that you don't get very far, you get on to point three, and you end up having a, a long discussion about it, and that's, absolute, that's absolutely fine. We will ask three groups to come and just share with us what you've talked about um, so that we can hear it. And Liv and Lois and myself, Derek, we'll, we will come round. Do, do talk in Norwegian, but if we come and sit at your table, perhaps if you could just tell us what you're talking about in English, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> okay. So um, I've chosen two programmes. One, because it was uh, process based and it was done within our dance house, so we're fortunate enough to have a venue. One, because it was product based and it was in libraries, so outside, in the community settings, over a very wide geographic area. So two different ways that you can apply this. So working through the prompts that you've got on your table, when I'm here, I'm going to be talking about um, young people, excluded young people from school. And when I'm here, I'm going to be talking about libraries and four to 11 year olds and families. Okay. So first prompt, which group of people do you want to make your offer to? and why. So here, excluded young people uh, because we want to counter the bad educational experiences they have and offer them dance as, as a different way of learning. And here, four to eleven year olds and their families as a way of reaching new audiences, new people, bringing new people to dance. Okay. What does dance offer to that group? For the young people, fitness, social interaction, Friendship, teamwork, discipline, learning about dance. And for the 4 to 11 and the family groups, it's about a dynamic way of exploring stories through dance and linking them to reading in libraries, giving them fun, giving them a chance to dance together, um, parents or carers and children, um, and a chance to move and use their imagination. Okay, what are you aiming to achieve from your point of view to benefit dance, the dancers, and your company or your venue? Well, from here, uh, it's the knowledge that our dance programme has had a real positive impact on a vulnerable young person's life. 
Uh, we may reach young people who might actually want to, if they know about it, might want to come to a dance class. They might want to come to a dance venue. Uh, it's about an art dance organisation making a positive contribution to society. It's about demonstrating to teachers how they can use dance as an educational tool. It's about keeping our venue vibrant and really linked to its community, strengthening its links to the community. And, and actually it's about giving the professional dancers space and a different context to explore ideas and themes for their own professional practice. Here, it's about employing three young dancers. It's about giving those dancers new skills to create work with the four to 11 year old group and giving them new skills to work in libraries, which is a very specific, very public space, which is always free moving, it's very diverse. And it's about signposting to local dance performances. So each time we go to a library, we will leave behind information about how those, young, those children and their families might be able to go to a dance show or go to a dance class. Okay, so what will the content of that programme be? Here, it's going to be um, about, it's going to be an intensive week. Uh, it's going to be about taking class, learning techniques, creating a new work to have a closed performance at the end of the week to families, carers, other pupils. Uh, it's about the professional dancers emphasising things like teamwork, active listening, respect, <coughs> hygiene, um, the dance skills, and actually we're building into it a, an accreditation. So at the end, the young people will have a certificate to take away with them so they feel they've really got something to show for their achievements. And in England, we have arts awards and they will do their bronze arts award in a week. Here, it's about creating a product. So it's a promenade performance, so a performance that moves around a library. It's going to visit 16 libraries across a very wide geographic area and it will do th three performances a day each of about 40 minutes so how will you find and engage the group of people that you're wanting to work with and how many people can you work with so from here we need to work with a small number because we want to give a really deep experience to the young people that come along so probably our top number is 12 to 15 we will need uh, teachers from the pupil referral unit to come along as well to participate. Um, and from here, we will probably limit, because we're going to walk around a library uh, with this performance, and we're going to do a, a, afterwards a short workshop in the, um, for the families and children in the library, we're going to limit it to about 20 people. In actual fact, what happens is that when you tour in libraries, people start joining on. So you may have 20 start, and you might have 40 people finish it, but we start off with 20. Okay. Um, here, the way that we find our audience is we work with the librarians, and we work with the library authorities. And actually, they are also going to put a bit of money in to help us fund this program. And here, we work with the teachers and the education authority and they're going to put a little bit of money in. And they're also going to help identify the young people who was, this would make a real difference to their life. Okay, so then, which dance company are we going to work with? Which dancers? Um, and this is where, to some extent, that quality question comes in that was talked about yesterday. So here, we're going to use Zoe Logic. Uh, Zoe Golding has been working with young men for many years. She has developed a, a, a young male performance company uh, and she has a particular interest in working with non-dancers and nurturing through and introducing them to dance skills. Here, we're going to work with Rosie Hefford, choreographer of Secondhand Dance. I know that they've been performing in libraries for two years in London and the South East of England. I need to give a good experience to librarians because they're a bit nervous about dance coming into libraries. So hopefully if we put them into a safe pair of hands, they're going to do more dance in the future. But Rosie will actually recruit dancers from our region so that we're upskilling and training dancers from our region to do more work like this. 
Uh, and will the work take place in a dance setting or in a community setting? Well, here, part of it is actually allowing young people to come into a dance venue, possibly for the first time. It's about giving them the respect to have and own a dance studio and then to perform on a professional dance stage with professionals. This one, it's important that it's in our dance venue or in a venue. And this one, it's about going out into the community. And some of the libraries we perform in will be in city centres or town centres. And one or two will be in the middle of an estate, and there'll be a porter cabin library on the middle of an estate. Um, are there partners outside of dance? Everything we do is in partnership. So here it is the educational authority, and here it is the library authorities. And our hope is that by working closely with them to design the programme and to watch how it goes and evaluate it, they may. Of their, of their own volition, wants to do more dance work. So that's always at the mind, is what happens next? Where do we go with this next? Um, I've talked about the time period, and how much will it cost? Well, these programmes actually did cost around about um, the pupil referral unit programme. It's about 33,500 kroner. And the uh, libraries programme, which was about <coughs> three or four months rehearsal to six week summer holiday tour, uh, that was 190,000 kroner. Okay, so that takes you through the sort of prompts that we work through. Um, and I could have applied it to associate schools, which Derek talked about yesterday, which is where the schools pay us around about 1,500 pounds a year, and they get a package of masterclasses, workshops, <coughs> tickets to performances. I could also have applied it to a new programme we're starting called Dance Companions, which uh, has come about because of our relationship with some dance colleagues in Finland, where a volunteer buddies up with uh, an isolated older person and they take them to dance class, dance workshop, dance performance. So you can apply it in different, in different contexts. At this point, I'm going to hand to Lois. Uh, to talk about her personal view about working in some of these communities. Hiya. Um, just so that it's clear, um, I began my life as a dancer, trained as a dancer and worked in some dance companies. And then I did set up Attic Dance um, and I ran that for about 18 years. And whilst I was running Attic Dance, I built quite a, a big outreach programme of work and because I was interested in working with the dance houses and the venues to develop an audience for our work, I didn't see a reason why not to be. Um, it excited me to think about the content, the creative and artistic content of the work, and to think how that might be translated into a workshop programme, and to think about the techniques used in making the work as well, how that might be shared. And that was often shared um, with schools and education, but also into the wider community. Um, it did mean that I had to think of the dancers that I worked with, with this in mind. If this was an approach I wanted to take, then I needed to work with dancers that were highly talented and creative and skillful at working and performing, making the work, but also delivering the workshop programme. So hence I worked with Anna Ekenes. Um, many, many years ago, um, when she just left college. And, um, and it was this quality of dance practitioner that I was always looking for. Um, and it wasn't easy to find, um, so, so um, finding the good ones was great. Since running Attic Dance, uh, when I had my baby, I found that I wasn't touring as much with the company, and I was at home working in our locality, which was the city of Plymouth. I was still working, working, but I wasn't traveling as much. And I started to find other ways to share um, my dance practice. So I began to build partnerships in the city with schools, with community centers, play centers, family centers, and uh, with health. So I was working in hospitals, working in care homes, and taking uh, work that interested me and also met some of their aims and objectives um, out into the community. 
since leaving Attic, which was about 2007, I've been um, part freelance dance practitioner and also I lecture at Farmouth University part-time. And the focus of my work there is building the communities program at the university. Um, I've become more interested in thinking of it as a puzzle and that there are puzzles out there that sometimes I can be a part of, of solving um, through my creative, creative ideas and through my passion and interest in dancing. And um, some of the puzzles that are thrown to me might be we have trouble in our school with children, behaviour, and my challenge is how can creativity, dance, the medium of dance work to develop a solution to this with the partners. I'm not saying we have the only solution, it's usually in partnership with other ideas. Um, sometimes it could be um, there are issues of isolation in our city, especially with older people. So what can I, for me, I like those kind of challenges. I say, well, what can I do about that? What, what's exciting for me? What kind of creative initiative can I develop that still excites me as an artist, but is also going to address some of these issues? Um, recently, I've been working with my local town. I live in a, a rural area, and we have a lot of poverty in the town. And there are issues around people not coming to, to shop in the town because they go to the big supermarkets and lots of the shops are struggling. And so again, this was a new, interesting, exciting puzzle um, for me to have a think about creatively. And I began to think, well, what can I do as a dance practitioner um, around this issue? Because it affects me. It's where I live. It's where I go to buy things. So I started to develop a series of creative workshops, starting with dance, but then opening it out to all the local arts and crafts groups, the sewing groups, the writing groups, and inviting them to some creative exchange workshops where they shared ideas and they talked to each other about what they were doing. And my aim was, was to get new ideas out there, new creative ideas, but by running workshops was to bring and keep people in the town. And we ran a series of workshops over the autumn, and then in the spring, I started to negotiate with the shops, the traders, the cafe owners, the museums and the libraries, um, to think about how we could create a festival where we shared the outcome of those creative exchanges. So we put performances in, into the streets, we put artwork into the shops, um, it went all over the town with some uh, really well rehearsed work and some very rough experimental explorations and it was all welcome. Some of the most exciting creative work happened and it encouraged people to see their town as a, as a place where these things could go on, where risks could be taken, and it also attracted attention and brought people into our town to take part in some of these activities. So it was kind of opening the town out a bit. And then recently, last summer, yes, this summer just gone, um, I wanted to, to do something to celebrate the area, the landscape, we live in an area, um, Cornwall, where I come from, is very beautiful, but most of the tourists drive straight past us and go down to the, the honeypot area of Cornwall. But we have some really beautiful things to offer with our landscape and with our cultural offers, but sometimes they're missed. So um, I thought I'd maybe work with local people to see if we could create uh, a film that we could share on our website, on the town council website. It's a very small town. Um, and uh, so I invited people to choose their favorite outside place. So it might be their back garden, it might be an iconic historical monument, or a beach, or the moors. And we met them there, me and a filmmaker, and filmed them dancing to their favorite piece of music in their favorite place and then we edited it into one film, just taking extracts 
So you had the man that runs the carpet shop, a family, a mother and daughter, little community groups, all dancing in their different favourite places to make a film, which is now on the tourist website, and it just celebrates our landscape. So for me, as a dance artist, I would say to you, as artists, um, don't tie yourselves only to theatres or to trained dancers, because there's a really exciting world out there to to play in and uh, be inspired by. Thank you. Thanks, Lois. Right, so it's, it's over to you now to, to discuss and come up with some ideas and concepts for, for your own programme. Um, two things, to, I think, to put to one side. This is an exercise, and it's an artificial exercise with, with, with the dance sector. One of the things that was said yesterday is um, kind of a warning, don't do to people, but do it with people. So, of course, normally you would have an open conversation early with the communities that you're going to work with. We're not going to do that today. Uh, the second is, where are you going to get the money from? Uh, this is the kind of work, it can unlock pots other than arts funding. Um, but, again, that's a whole other kind of discussion. So we'll remove that one from this. This is about the concepts, the ideas for outreach work, and ideas about the kind of communities that you could collaboratively work with. Okay. Um, if you're working in a large area, how could you collaborate with another organisation to work with a similar community, even if it's in slightly different places? Ideas are equal, whether they're from the presenter, the producer, the artist. There isn't a hierarchy of ideas. So at your table, there isn't a hierarchy. Uh, it is a chance to reflect on some of the things that you've heard, the ideas you've had from the last two days. If you end up getting into a really juicy debate, then stick with it and go through that. That's a really useful thing for you to be doing. But if you, can, if you do get through the prompts, that's great. And one value to bear in mind that cropped up a couple of times yesterday is generosity. And I think that um, what we've been talking about this morning is, 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 is something that... This work is something that generosity is a core value for. So enjoy. Have a look through your prompts. Work through your prompts. You've got half an hour. And, and then we will inv invite three groups just to come and share what kind of conversations that you've been having, where you've got to. If you can work with a whole table, that's great. If you've got a really large table and it's not going to work for you to work together, you can split into a couple of groups. Okay, and Derek, who's at the back, um, Lois, myself, Liv, we'll, we will come around. Do you ask us questions or uh, talk to us if you want to?